The market's exploded, sales are up, inventory is way down, prices have begun a serious climb. Oh wait, that's the script for a not so distant future video. The fire hasn't been lit yet, but all the supplies which include gasoline, they're ready to go. Today, the market is more of the same with that summer slug along. It's going to be this way for another couple of weeks, but there is an interesting development with inventory levels. In this video, we're going to go over the single family and kind of market in the state of Massachusetts. We're also going to do a quick interest rate update and talk about some relevant current events. Hey, it's Jeff Chubb. I'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent. I've sold more than a thousand houses. If you have any questions in regards to real estate, then nope, I'm here to help. I'm seeing it day in and day out. Buyers are now paying the two and a half to 3% buyer agent commission when buying a house. We offer a purchase power plan where home buyers can save thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars in this plan. Buyers pay for our services by the hour instead of a percentage of the purchase price. Quick story, on one of our listings, the buyer was paying cash. Seller was willing to accept the buyer's initial offer amount, but not the amount plus the buyer agency fee. It was a cash deal too. The buyer had to come out of pocket with nearly two and a half percent more over his initial offer in order to pay their agent's commission. And here's the thing. The buyer is the one that actually found the property on their own and visited an open house on their own. I asked them if they could have saved probably eleven to twelve thousand dollars using our purchase power plan. But if you're a serious buyer and you're putting 20% down, or better yet, you're paying cash, you wanna save a small fortune in fees, then you need to check out our purchase power plan. But now, let's jump into the single family market stats. Inventory continues to plug along, which is completely expected for the summer, but it's not really falling, which is a surprise. We now have 5,081 single family homes on the market in the state of Massachusetts. This is down slightly from the 5,126 units last month, but right in range of the 5,059 just four weeks ago, 5,075 units three weeks ago, and 5,078 units from two weeks ago. Yeah, inventory is level, because we now have 0.4% more homes on the market than just 28 days ago. We now have 1,165 more houses on the market compared to the same week last year, and this is a bit of a pullback. But we are seeing the levels between 2022 and today tighten as we now have only 216 fewer houses on the market compared to 2022. Now this is the story with inventory. It being level rather than pulling back is bringing us on the path of crossing the 2022 inventory levels. This week we listed 923 single family homes in the state of Massachusetts. We listed four more houses than when compared to the same week in 2023. So new listings increased by 0.4%. The four week rolling average is 1,039 units. Now this week we put 953 single family houses under agreement. And this was really big jump as it's 152 units or 19% more than the same week last year. We put 801 houses under agreement. That four week rolling average, that's 927 units. So when compared to last year's market, new listings were up by 0.4% while under agreements, they were up by 19%. Now the pending new listing ratio is 93.3%, which is compared to the 88.5% that we saw this week last year. What this means is that 93% of all the properties that came on the market just two weeks ago went under agreement last week. Now there were 607 single family homes that closed last week for an average sales price of $836,000 and a median sales price of $660,000. Sales levels compared to the same week last year were up by 65 units or 12% as there are 542 single family homes that sold last year for an average sales price of $774,000 months of inventory. This is definitely determining what type of market we're in, zero to five months. That's a seller's market where the closer you get to zero, the stronger, more aggressive of a seller's market that it is. This week, months of inventory, it actually fell to 1.63 months from last week's 1.75 months to be expected in the summer. 1.63 months this week is compared to the 1.31 months this week back last year. Real quick, it's my shameless plug. I just wanted to mention that if you are thinking about buying or selling a home, then it would be a true pleasure to help you. Now, are to the condo market. We now have 2,737 condos on the market as of Monday. Now, this is a bit of a rebound back up as last week inventory fell to 2,689 units. This means that there's 2.9% less inventory on the market today than the inventory levels 28 days ago. We now have 553 more units on the market today than compared to today last year, 195 more than compared to the inventory levels of 2022, and 47 more units than in 2021. There were 403 condos that came on the market last week with that four-week rolling average of 451 units. 
Now the 403 units listed was 16 units or 4.1% more than the 387 condos that came on the market in the same week back in 2023. Now this week we put 356 condos under a grid. The 356 sales was 16 units or 4.3% fewer condos than last year when we put 372 condos under agreement. That four week rolling average, that was 361 units. So 4.1% more listings that came on the market when compared to this week last year while selling 4.3% fewer condos. The condo pending to new listing ratio this week fell to 84% and this spread 85.1% that we saw back this time last year. There were 245 condos that sold this week for an average sales price of $710,000 and a median sales price of $568,000. The same week last year, there were 195 condos that closed. So sales levels were up by 25.6% months of inventory. That decreased to 2.04 months from last week's 2.11 months. This is compared to the months of inventory levels of 1.61 months this week last year. And each of you can do me a huge favor. Can you hit that like button? It's right down there. Believe it or not, it just makes a huge difference to me as well as the YouTube channels. It just plays with that YouTube algorithm. Well, subscribing, if you haven't done that and you're enjoying the content, I truly appreciate you considering subscribing because that one doesn't hurt either. But time to talk about interest rates. Since we last spoke, interest rates fell a lot. But in the recent week, they've ticked up nearly a quarter of a point. But interest rates are still down a quarter of a point this month and are down 0.64% from this time last year. Keep in mind that for every 1% that interest rates fall, then home buyers pick up 10% of buying power. In other words, let's say interest rates are 7% today and then you can afford to buy a $500,000 house. If interest rates go down 1% to 6%, then for the same mortgage payment, that buyer can now afford a $550,000 house. But let's circle back to my intro real quick. Check this article out. The value of U.S. housing hits record $50 trillion, up 7% last year, just in time for the Fed to cut rates. Now, home prices, most places throughout the country, didn't go down. But weren't the Fed's rate hikes supposed to slow the economy? It didn't happen. And now housing is the least affordable it has been in U.S. history. In reality, the total value of the U.S. housing market grew by 6.6% this year. So yeah, the Fed and what they were trying to do did not work in the housing market. But Redfin reported that the total value of U.S. homes gained $3.1 trillion over the last 12 months to reach a record $49.6 trillion. But here's a staggering stat. The total value of U.S. homes has more than doubled in the past decade, climbing nearly 120% from $22.7 trillion in June of 2014. Broken down by age group, the total value of homes owned by millennials rose 21.5% year over year to $8.6 trillion. This is nearly four times as fast as any other generation. But this does make sense as millennials are now the largest generation by population, making up a larger share of the home buying market. Incredibly, around two thirds of the mortgages taken out in 2023 were issued to home buyers under the age of 45. Baby boomers still rule the roost though, but millennials, they're on the rise. The value of homes owned by baby boomers increased 6.1% to $19 trillion, while Gen X home values rose 5.9% to $13.6 trillion. Have you heard all the talk about recession lately, by the way? Unemployment is rising, stocks are falling, while bond yields, they're below short-term interest rates, generally a sign of recession. Now I read a poll that said that 59% of respondents believe that we are currently in a recession. Now, I personally trust Main Street over Wall Street, especially A Street, because check this one out. Over 10% of credit card outstanding debt is over 90 days delinquent. It's not just credit cards, it's also all the loans as well. Credit card delinquency has increased rapidly since 2021 and is now higher than it was back in 2019. What is interesting is that delinquencies have been concentrated among credit cards originated in the last few years and that these credit cards were much riskier than in previous years. Now, kind of makes sense though, right? These were the people who charged credit cards in order to fill that gap of increasing prices and stagnant income gains. This was their rabbit in the hat. This gave them a little more time and pushed off the inevitable. But the Piper, they've returned and it's now time to pay them. So what does all of this mean for housing though? While some of these folks own houses, the ones that do are most likely sitting on a boatload of equity. While I don't know for sure, I imagine that the plurality of this stat are folks that are renters. But here's the future issue. And this is how it's all tied together. 
We talked about how a recession is coming and most likely it's already here. Delinquencies are up. Delinquencies are going to leave banks to holding back lending, which in turn will exacerbate a downturn. But this is what happens. Banks, they're still going to lend, but they will increase their lending standards. Falling interest rates couldn't happen at a better time. It will provide some relief to all of the money that people are spending on their credit card debt. And it will also help stimulate the housing market that is sitting in a sales level dumpster slump. Simulating the housing market will stimulate the largest contributor to the U.S. economy, L, and housing prices. Get ready for them to go up even more at bigger levels. Want to talk about your own personal real estate needs? Again, it's Jeff Chubb. Whether you're looking to buy or sell a house in the next nine or 90 days, then I would love to chat with you and just find out more about your real estate goals. And if you know of anyone that's thinking about buying or selling, know that I truly appreciate you keeping me in mind and passing along my information. You can visit youtuberealestateagent.com or find all my contact information in the description below right down there. Until next time.